What big race? You mean to stand there and tell me you ain't never heard of the Boonesboro race? Well, I figured everybody in Kentucky heard of that. Well, me and Stinch ain't from Kentucky. We're up further north. Oh. Well, it all happened about four or five years back. See, every year, a band of engines come in here to trade. And this year, they had one of the fellas that figured he could just outrun everything on two feet and most things on four, so they set about promoting the race. Engines like to gamble, in case you didn't know. Yeah. So we done a little gambling, and uh, they put up everything they had supporting their man, and we got everything we had together to call the bets. But that was the year that Dan O'Boom was up to Salem, and he couldn't run the race. So what happened? What happened? Well, like to cleaned out everything in Boonesboro, lock, stock, and barrel. Well, now the next year we had another race. And this time we had Dan O'Boom representing us. <laughs> and he liked to run that engine right into the ground. <laughs> it was the dangest thing. You know, every spring now we have this big race. But the engine ain't been born yet. They can outrun Dan O'Boom. Jericho, will you run around the other side? But they keep right on trying. Do you mean to tell me that people actually bet money on this contest? Well, not money exactly. We ain't got much of that. But there's an awful lot of fur and livestock was trading hands, I'll tell you. <laughs> people come from miles around with all the worldly goods. I tell you, it's a dangerous spectacle. I figured I've got about half of my story we already wagered. I figure that I can be a tolerably rich man in a couple of years. What happens if you lose? Well, shucks, man, I just got through telling you that there ain't nobody can outrun Dan O'Boone. Mm. Excuse me, I got a customer. Mm. Can I help you, ma'am? <laughs> How much do you figure this town has got bet on this uh, boon fellow? Oh, everything except their wives and kids, from what that old coot says. Well, don't you figure that if uh, this boon fellow was to disappear the day before the race, this town would be willing to sort of pay to buy him back? I figure maybe they would. <laughs> camp only last week. I never saw that one before. Uh, it may have been they've gotten smart and brought in an outsider for the race this year. Well, that's hardly what I would call cricket. You know him? Yeah, he's an Iroquois from up around the lakes. Indians up there call him Deerfoot. It sounds logical. They say at any distance over two miles he can outrun a horse. Sounds like a bad year for Boonesboro. Think you can outrun him, Daniel? I ran him once, about two years ago. That makes me feel a little better. I have a whole winter's catch of furs bet on that race. Of course, the fact that he and eight or ten other Braves were chasing me with tomahawks might have urged me along a little bit. 
Well, I, I'd be happy to make him angry at you again if you think it would help. I'll even furnish the tomahawk. Well, you hang on to your tomahawk. Don't do me any favors. <laughs> <laughs> say you bet on the race? The whole winter's catch. Why? Well, there's always another winter. What do you mean by that? The way this feels, I'll be lucky to walk, much less run. Bristles off a hog with water colder than that. I'm just doing as I was told to do. I can have a bit more water. Now don't bother on my account. That's exactly what Ma said you'd say. Sometimes you sound more like your Ma than your Ma. And if that were my leg, I'd stay in bed and let it heal, instead of trying to rush things the way you are. The foot and the water. Oh, don't start that again, Becky. You know, everybody's dependent on me. If you ask me, the whole thing's ridiculous. Every spring, the entire community goes crazy over a silly foot race. Well, it's not so crazy. Everybody has a day of fun after a hard winter. And for another thing, it helps keep us on a friendly basis with the Indians. I'd rather foot race them than fight them. I give up. Say, it looks like the swelling's going down. Cincinnati's will be glad to hear that. I hear he's betting heavy again this year. Serves him right if he loses. Dan, now will you try to remember and stay off of this foot as much as possible? You mean to say there ain't no chance we can get them engines to agree to call all bets off? I did the best I could, Cincinnati. But those creeks remember everything they lost last year, and this year they intend to get even. I tell you, it's conspiracy. Every one of them engines know that there ain't nobody in Kentucky that can outrun Daniel Boone. I figure one of them conniving redskins pushed that rock. Oh, now, Cincinnati, they wouldn't do a thing like that. After all, we've had a great deal of rain this spring, and rock slides are not uncommon. Here you go, sticking up for your own race again. The trouble with you, Cincinnati, is you're a poor loser. I'm a poor winner, too. <laughs> Maybe if you two had quit arguing, we could get around to discussing what we're going to do. Who's arguing? You got any ideas, Mingo? I have an idea that we're going to be the poorest community in Kentucky if we don't find somebody who can run. You are a real big help, you are. How about you, Mingo? Yeah. How about you, Mingo? I just said that. Now, there is an idea. You know, I have seen you run with Daniel before, and it seems to me you're always able to keep up. Oh, no, Cincinnati, I'm sorry. I've spoken to the Creeks about that. They claim I'm disqualified because I'm part Indian. Oh, now, we could cut your hair real short and set you up with a new set of clothes. No, no, I've tried that before, too, back at Oxford. I, I still look like a war hoop. Uh, I guess that's all there is for it, then. Just gonna have to go along with Dan, or game leg or not. See, how is his ankle coming along, anyway? Not very well. Oh, we can move about a bit without a cane, but there's not much chance he'll be in any condition to race. Now, come on, you come back here with that, you stupid rabbit. I want my carrot. Come back here, you. Give me back that carrot. Come here, you stupid rabbit. Come on, you come back here with that. Give me back that carrot. Come here. I want my carrot. Don't rabbit. Now, come on, you come back here with that. What's all that yelling going on up there? Did you see what I just saw? I didn't see nothing. I heard some yelling, though. Well, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. I'm not sure I believe it anyway. In the name of time, you're talking about that. Well, it could be. I just saw the answer to a prayer go by. Look yonder. Oh, this is Jericho Jones. And what's he doing outside that stockade anyway? He's supposed to be in there working in the storeroom. Well, Cincinnati's never look a gift horse in the mouth. You may be gazing at the end of all of our problems. <sighs> Dan, you've been drinking that liniment I gave you instead of rubbing it on your leg. Well, do you realize while you've been looking all around, the answer to our problem has been right here? And do you realize if you just talk a little sense, I know what you're talking about? Sense and notice I've never talked more sense. Jericho! You calling me, Mr. Boone? Come over here, boy! Would you mind explaining what this is all about, Daniel? 
Something you want, Mr. Boone? Would you mind doing that again? Doing what? Well, didn't I just see you running through that gate chasing a rabbit? Yep, and to tell you the truth, I'm getting mighty put out at this animal. That's the second time he's done it today. Did what? Stole a carrot I was eating right out of my hand. I got it back, though. Now, let me get this straight. You mean to tell me that that rabbit stole a carrot out of your hand and you chased him down a foot and bought it back? You didn't think I was gonna let him get away with it, do you? It's not the carrot, it's the principle of the thing I object to. And you're a witness to this foot race, Daniel? Yep. What do you mean, chasing rabbits on my time anyway? You're supposed to be down in the cellar there, storing them potatoes. I got hungry. And I don't want you getting hungry on my time, neither. Cincinnati, I can think of at least 20 men in Boonesboro that can lift a sack of potatoes. Well, so can I, but I ain't paying them. Well, I can't think of one other that's fleet enough afoot to run down a rabbit. Now, you know, you might have something there. Well, now, let's stop all this talk about potatoes. Jericho, you and me have got some business to discuss. Well, I got to admit, he's got good action. But I'll have to take your word about his early speed, Daniel. Well, he seems like he's sound and weighing and limb. Oh, oh boy. Oh. He's got good confirmation. His feet are good and sound. You try to check my teeth and you're gonna get bit. What do you think, man? Go home. It's a long race, Daniel. How can we be sure that the boy has staying power? Well, I'll borrow a horse tomorrow morning and pace him eight or 10 miles. Now, wait a minute. Anybody else got any more ideas? Aren't you forgetting one thing? Well, what's that? That Eric Warrior has been training every day. It seems to me we ought to get somebody to condition the boy. I never thought about that. Seem to me to be any problem. Everybody knows you're the best foot racer in these parts, so I reckon it's up to you to do the training. Well, all I know about running is what I learned trying to keep possession of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now somebody will just listen now, to me. Did you try training a horse, Daniel? Yep, I've trained a few in my day. Well, in principle, it'll be about the same then. Sounds reasonable. Sounds right. Well, that settles it. We were just training him like we would a horse then. Drinks are on me. <laughs> Are you gentlemen about all through planning my future? Well, I think we've covered just about all the territory, unless you'd care to make a suggestion. I've got a lot of suggestions. Well, go ahead. This is an open meeting. Sure. sure. Absolutely. First of all, I suggest you forget the whole thing. What do you... Uh, would you mind explaining that remark? I'd be very happy to explain it. Well, then go ahead. I can explain it in a few simple words. I'm not gonna run. You're not gonna run? You don't really mean that now, do you, boy? I'm a man of a few words, and you just heard him. Well, now, Jericho, I don't think you completely understand the situation. Oh, yes, I do. You see, in a manner of speaking, the fate of Boonesboro is resting on your shoulders. Oh, no, it ain't. Where's your patriotism, boy? I never even heard the word before. Jericho, don't you want to be a hero? Nope. Well, would you mind telling us why you're so against it? Do I have to have a reason? Well, I think it might help us to understand you a little mm -hmm. better. All right. Let's just say I don't like being treated like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just a matter of speaking. That's not what it sounded like to me. Well, now, maybe we can start all over again. Nope. Your mind is made up. Yep. You wouldn't consider changing? Nope. What would the Indians do in a case like this, Mingo? Burn him at the stake. Jericho, you like living here in Boonesboro, don't you? Yep. And you like working for me, don't you? Mm, yep. Well, I guess that settles it then. Settles what? You are going to enter that race, and you are going to win it. Because if you don't, I am going to be out of business, and you are going to be out of a job. Now, you just think that over. I'll still buy that drink. I just can't figure what's eating on that boy. We are painting him as cotton, as you might say, and he don't want no part of it. I can't figure out what he's so infernal mad about. 
Well, you'll have to sort of admit that we were a little abrupt in bringing up the subject. It was more like we were telling him he had to run instead of asking him. Doggone, as long as he's working for me, I guess I can tell him what to do. He's supposed to be looking out for my interests. Well, I don't think that's exactly the way to handle him. He's uh, sort of sensitive. I'm inclined to agree with Daniel, except that I think it goes a little deeper than that. What do you mean by that? Up till now, nobody has bothered to ask Jericho if he would run or not. Well, as long as we had Daniel here, there was no object in it. Well, that's the point exactly. It might be that he's been waiting to be considered all this time. And now that we've asked him only as a last resort, his feelings have been hurt. You know, Mingo, I think you got something there. I reckon maybe he feels he wasn't wanted. And that's our fault for treating him like an outsider. The question is, how do we go about explaining it? Oh, I don't think I'd try, Daniel. At least not right away. Why don't we let him think about it for a while, and maybe he'll begin to realize how much we need him. You, um... You don't figure he'll try to leave town or anything like that, do you? I don't know. He's sort of headstrong. But I sure would hate to see him go on account of a little misunderstanding. Now, maybe we ought to just lock him up so that nothing will happen to him. I got a room out in back I can fix for him real comfortable. Well, I don't exactly feel he'd cotton to that. Well, it's only a short time, Daniel. And it's certainly better than running the risk of losing him. Well, I, uh... I hope he gets used to it. Understand, Boone thinks he can. With that Boone character hurt, we're going to make up our minds if this young squirt is going to be of any value to the town, or if we steal that Indian instead. Stealing that Indian ain't exactly practical. Them creeks are apt to get awful mad. In that case, it's got to be this young one here. And let's hope somebody wants him back bad enough to pay for him. Shod a lot of things in my time, but this is the first pair of horseshoes I ever made for a human being. This your ID, Natty? Not mine. Daniel's. How much do I owe you? Well, you figure it's gonna help him any? Yep. In a case like that, you don't owe me anything. But I got a couple of little bets going myself. <laughs> you want me to nail him to his feet? Well, I don't think you'll stand still for it. In some ways, uh, he's a little narrow-minded. How's he been looking in his workout? Well, he's awkward jumping over logs. That's why I figured these weights would help him. Sounds logical. Go get it. All right, Jeff. Now, you don't expect me to run with those things on, do you? Well, that's what I had them made up for. Mr. Boone, I've put up with an awful lot, but that's going too far. Now, nah, don't go getting your shirt tail tied in a knot. They don't train racing horses with racing plates. I keep telling you I ain't a horse, but nobody seems to listen to me. Now, you just sit down and hold your foot up. It won't take long to put them on. It's going to take longer than you think, because I ain't sitting down and I ain't holding my foot up. Well, it seems to me, Jericho, you always do things the hard way. Come on, Jericho. Hey, you... Yeah, 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 boy. Oh, Jericho, oh, 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 you just simmer down. Oh, 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 oh,
sit outside for a change after being cooped up inside all winter? Mm, indeed it is. But you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Daniel Boone, keeping that poor boy locked up in that storeroom. Well, he's comfortable. If it was me, I'd rather live there than stay upstairs where he's been staying. He's got more space. If it were you, you'd rather live under a tree. But some people are more civilized. Do you really think Jericho can win the race? Huh? Do you think Jericho can win the race? Oh, if he puts his mind to it, he can. The trouble with him is that he's liable to lose it out of downright stubbornness. Cat says I'd blame him if he did. You might not. There are a lot of other people who would. Oh, you don't think they'd go so far as to hurt him, do you, Pa? Uh, you wouldn't be showing more than a passing interest in him, would you? Well, whatever made you think that, Pa. Well, how would I know? He's young. Cobble good looking. Quit teasing, Dan. Can't you see your embarrassing her? Honey, there's a hot roast in the oven and some fresh bread. Why don't you take a plate to Jericho? I'm sure he'd enjoy it after Cincinnati's cooking. All right, Ma. Oh, and while you're at it, will you stop by the Briggs and pick up Israel? That boy never can keep track of time. If I unlock the door, isn't Jericho apt to get away? Oh, I don't think you'd do that. He's a mite unreasonable at times. I think he's a gentleman. Or he'd better be. You ever stop to think about how much trouble you've been causing me? Here I was, all happy and contented, and you, you had to steal that carrot, and now look at me. Living in a barn, run to death, horseshoes on my boots. You'll have to come in, because I can't get out. That door only opens from one side. I brought you some supper. Come on in. There's nothing to be afraid of. Sure wasn't expecting to see you. My ma sent it over. What'll I do with it? Right there. That, that was right nice of your ma. Well, she was afraid that Cincinnati might poison you with his cooking. He's been trying. That looks great. It's probably cold by now. But I hurried over here as fast as I could. Big improvement over what I've been eating. Oh, almost forgot myself. <laughs> I used to have a company. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. It ain't much, but I call it home. My ma thinks it's a shame to keep you locked up like this. I think so, too. Makes it unanimous, except for your pa. Now, what does he think about it? Well, he thinks it's better than that room you've been living in. He's got a point there. Still ain't saying much. Does your pa know you're here? Yes. Why? Didn't it ever occur to him that I might knock you right over the head and walk out of here? Oh, he thought about it. But he said you wouldn't do a thing like that. He said you were a gentleman. Your pa said that? He certainly did. Then you ask him why he don't start treating me like one. Uh, don't you think you better start eating? It's getting colder all the time. You know? My pa really likes you. That's a funny way of showing it. It's just that he doesn't think you realize how important this race really is. Not important to me. I don't think it was ever really important to my pa either. But he always made believe it was because it was important to other people. That's why he always tried to win. Not because he cared, but because somebody else did. That's exactly the part I don't understand. If they want to bet on something, why don't they bet on whether it's going to rain or not instead of some stupid race? It's not the betting. It's just their way of showing that they like you and that they have confidence in you. And that's why you let them down, because you keep saying that you don't want to run. They're not betting on me. They already bet on your pa, and they can't get out of it. I know that's how it seems, and I know you've got hurt feelings. Who says I got hurt feelings? Well, you just said it yourself. I never said no such thing. And if you haven't got hurt feelings, why don't you say you'll run? Because if somebody had asked me to run instead of trying to force me into it... There, you just said it again. I wish you'd quit putting words in my mouth. I'm right, and you know it. Except you won't admit it, not even to yourself. How do you know so much about it? Because I've done it. I've had hurt feelings when people didn't even mean it. They wanted to hurt them back. I felt awful about it, but I did it anyway. Who can I hurt in this town? 
Everybody. Because they all like you. I suppose that's why they keep me in here like a criminal. Yes, it is. Pa was afraid that you'd get mad and run away. Nobody wanted that to happen. Not as long as they figure I can pull their fat out of the fire. That's not true. The trouble with you is you know you're wrong and you're just too pig-headed to do anything about it. I suppose your pa said that, too. He said you could win this race if you tried, but you're apt to lose it out of plain stubbornness. Well, he's a fine one to be calling anybody stubborn. He's the most bullheaded. I don't believe him, though. You are going to try and win, aren't you? I haven't even thought about it. Well, you better start thinking real fast, because there's only two days left. Don't you think you better eat your supper? Did your pa send you over here to get me to change my mind? Gosh, no. Probably found me good if you knew I'd even mentioned it. Then why are you doing it? I'm doing it for your own good. You see, the people in Boonesboro have a lot of money tied up in you. If they think you can win and you lose out of just plain stubbornness, well, they're out to do something far-fetched and... Well, I wouldn't want to see anything bad happen to you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm mad because they locked me up in here. It's no need to take it out on you. Well, you're probably mad at me, too, for talking the way I did. No, I'm not mad at you. I just wanted you to know that nobody meant to slight you by not asking you to run. It's just that, well, they didn't think. Thank you for telling me. You will try and win, then? I'll think about it. Well, that makes everything just fine and dandy. Uh, no, wait a minute. I said I'd think about it. I didn't say I'd run. I know you will. Well, I've got to go now. Could, uh, I'd walk you home, except I'd probably get shot if anybody saw me. Well, that's all right, because I have to pick up my little brother anyway. Well, look, thank your mom for the food. Oh, I will. Look, I'll be back in the morning to pick up the dishes. You don't have to do that. I'll give them to your pa. I'll ask him if I can bring him back. Oh, well, it's no trouble, really. If you really want to get away, I'll leave the door unlocked. You could have blame for it if you did. I don't care, not if you really want to get away. I think I'll stay pinned up. Bye. Bye. Just as much undressed. 
Now put that ransom letter there on the bed so somebody will see it. You better take that with you. I'm Just going get to I'm going. Randy. I'm ready. I'm ready. Wait. Oh. out again today, Daniel? At least enough to limber him up, not enough to tire him. You sure you ain't got him trained a little too fine, Daniel? No. Nope. You did that 10 miles yesterday. You did it in an hour and 15 minutes, carrying weights. I figure he's just about on edge. What do you think his chances are, Mingo? I'd say they're rather good. For one thing, he has a psychological advantage. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that since Daniel isn't running, the Creeks are likely to become overconfident. By the time they find out how well Jericho can run, he should have built up a substantial lead. You know, Mingo, sometimes I think I understand you better when you talk an engine than when you talk in English. Now, wait just a minute. Take time to get your breath, and then you can tell me what happened to who. To Jericho! He's gone! Gone? Yes, well, you see, I went over to take his breakfast. We went to... over. Oh, will you be quiet a minute? Went over to take his breakfast to him, and I knocked on the door, and he wasn't there. So, well, I just walked right in, and he wasn't there. He's gone. He's run out on us, Dan. He couldn't. The door was still barred. Are you sure of that? Yes, I'm sure. And besides, he wouldn't have run away anyway, because, well, last night I offered to let him go, and he said he wouldn't do it. What's that you said about last night? Well, last night I took his supper to him, and I felt sorry for him being locked up like that, so I offered to let him go, and he wouldn't do it. Jemima, are you sure? Are you dead sure that you put that bar in place last night? Yes, I'm sure, Pa. Don't you see? Something's happened to him, something bad. Don't worry about it, and you two go on home. Come on, Mingo. <laughs> Knew we couldn't trust that boy. If you could talk, you could answer a lot of questions. Did you find anything, Daniel? Did you ever hear of a fella leaving in the middle of the night without his clothes? Without his clothes? They're all here. Every stitch of them. It all seems to point to a kidnapping, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought of that. It's not too illogical. With all that's at stake, someone may have thought that the town would pay a ransom. In that case, they'd left a note. Did you look for one? Yeah. Did you find anything outside? Tracks of two men coming and going. And the indication was that they were carrying something heavy when they left. Let's go find out. <laughs> What's keeping Carl? He should have been back here before this with the money. Or maybe you ain't as valuable a piece of property as we thought you was. <coughs> well, speak up, don't mumble. <coughs> oh. You got something you want to say? <coughs> well, I'm warning you, just one little yelp from you and I'm going to bash you with this stick here. You understand? <coughs> well, just keep it in mind. <coughs> Now, what is it you want to say? I'm hungry. Well, you can't blame that on me. We didn't figure on being here more than a few hours, so I didn't bring any grub along. I wonder what's keeping Carl. Maybe he got caught. No, he's got better sense than that. Maybe he decided to keep all the money himself. Well, he wouldn't do a thing like that. Or would he? Neither one of you is exactly what I'd call honest. 
Well, he's never stole from me before. Maybe he's never had the chance. Come to think of it, he ain't. No, oh, dang it. What do you want to go and put a thought like that in my head for? I got tired of waiting for you to think of it yourself. Oh. Look, would you mind if I stood up? My legs are getting cramped. Well, I don't see no harm in it. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. I don't suppose I could talk you into untying my hands. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you'd say. Sit down and start taking off your boots. too much, Cincinnati, so we don't know what happened to him. Well, it's plain enough to me. If he's been held for ransom, we'd have heard by now. I still don't think he ran off. And when this race is over, I aim to go looking for him. Yeah, we might be going with you, but not for the same reason. I wonder how Mingo's making out. What did the chief say? I spoke to him. Well, what did he say? He said he's waited long enough. It looks like it's up to you. Can you run on that ankle? Well, I don't know how far. But if they won't change your mind, I guess I've got no choice. Those creeks are anxious to collect their winnings and go home. And now we come to the big event of the day. I reckon you all know the rules since they ain't changed from last year. Now. This is a 10-mile run, starting here and ending here. The course is plainly marked all along the way, so you can't miss it. And uh, there'll be judges placed every mile to see that nobody takes a shortcut. All right, so now if the runners will get ready, get on your mark. Get ready. Hold it, Jericho! <laughs> Ten miles down river, they kidnapped me. Well, who did it? That don't make no difference now. Let's get this race started. Well, Jericho, I want you to know one thing. We didn't know whether you were kidnapped or whether you ran off. We couldn't find a ransom note. That don't matter now. Well, I just want you to know the town was ready to put up a ransom. We just didn't know what to do with it. Even after the way I've been acting? Well, I guess that's your business, son. I reckon we're all happy to just have you back. Why don't you go on over to my house and take a little rest? You look pretty well tuckered out. These people are all dependent on me, aren't they, Mr. Boone? Well, I don't reckon anybody expects you to run after all you've been through. That's not the point. I've been doing a lot of thinking since I saw you last. And, tired or not, I've got to run so they don't keep thinking I'll let them down. Well, I reckon that's up to you, Jericho. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to win, too. Well, I think maybe you will. Daniel, can we get on with the race? Good luck, boy. I'm going to need... All right! Get on your mark! Get ready! Mingo. Now, Mingo. 
since you ain't gonna run, me and the chief here has decided uh, that you're gonna be judges. Seems that you're the only white man he can trust. Suspicious cuss, ain't it? Can't understand it. Now, we're gonna station you down the creek there where the trail crosses to see that nobody gets drowned. And why don't you help Jericho along a little bit? Now I know where the chief gets his ideas. running neck and neck. You hear that? They're running even. Now, you want to double that back? Good. Stay here any longer, Daniel? Nope. Can't think of any good reason for going back either. Unless it's to keep Cincinnati from shooting himself. races we've ever had. 
Well, I'd say you came out real good, Cincinnati. I mean, if that Iroquois hadn't stepped in that badger hole, you'd be sleeping in the street. People been coming by ever since complimenting me on Jericho's sport and gesture, toting that engine home. <laughs> and then insisting that we call the race a tie. And why should they be complimenting you, Cincinnati? Well, I'm his employer and close associate. And I figure some of my sterling qualities are rubbed off on him. Yes, sir, I think that boy shows a lot of promise for next year. With the right guidance, of course. And, uh, providing you ain't available to run, Dano, that is. Well, considering he didn't get any sleep that night, no breakfast, and he'd already run 10 miles before the race started, I'd agree with you. He shows a lot of promise. Come on, you men, get to work. We haven't got all day. You know, the most important thing about running a business is knowing how to handle your help. And I think you're wonderful at it. You were saying, Cincinnati? I was saying, if we don't do something to stop that young man, he's going to take over the whole shebang. Jericho! Yes, sir! Get back to work! Yes, sir! Well, it's real nice seeing things get back to normal. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man, with an eye like an eagle and as small as a mountain was he. Like an eagle and as small as a mountain was he.